How do I start a local food business? So welcome to Marketing Food Online. In this video, I'm gonna give you the 10 things you need to know in order to start a local food business. No matter what state, city, county, or area that you're in, these 10 things are the list, the go-to list, if you wanna start a local food business. We're gonna dive into those 10 right now. All right, so welcome back. And as I mentioned in the introduction, I'm gonna run through the 10 most important things if you're looking to create a local food business, either in your home, your community, or in a commercial area, doesn't matter where, these 10 things are the list, and I'm gonna break them down for you one by one. And if you're not subscribed, make sure that you're subscribed because this is Marketing Food Online. Uh, my name is Damian Roberti. I'm a founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online. My wife, Sylvia, and I, our food e-commerce entrepreneurs. We have been for over 12 years now. We still operate uh, six e-commerce businesses. We sell our food all over the place <laughs> and we operate out of our commercial kitchen. And we also have several YouTube channels. We've actually got six YouTube channels. Three of them are for food entrepreneurs. You can check those links down below. We have one set up for food truck businesses, home-based cottage food businesses, and our other Marketing Food Online channel too, which has even more information on how to start a food business. So let's get right down to it. I'm gonna give you this top 10, I'm actually go from number 10 all the way to number one. So be sure that you actually sit back and watch the entire video. Now, number 10, if you wanna create a localized food business in your area, wherever you may be, you need to have, if you wanna make it legitimate, an EIN. This is an employer identification number. This is actually issued to you by the IRS, no matter what form of food business that you actually end up choosing to do. If it's a packaged food product, if it's a food truck, if it's even a restaurant or cafe, you need to have an EIN. Now, how do I get an EIN, Damien? Well, you can simply go to the IRS website and you apply for it. It's kind of like a social security number for your, uh, your business, your actual food business. So it's gonna give the IRS the ability to track your taxes. You can give that to your accountant. So when you file your taxes every year annually, and all of the amazing profits that you're gonna make from your business, those taxes that you pay on, you're gonna do that and use your EIN, which your business will have a dedicated number for that. Next up to number 10 is actually going to be the second part of number 10. <laughs> it's gonna be an LLC or an S Corp or C Corp. Now, what I highly recommend, what I've said in a lot of my videos when we talk about a variety of different food businesses, you want to make sure that you are an LLC. The reason why I say that, I personally have experience filing our business when we first started as an LLC, and I highly recommend you do that because it's a simpler, easier way for you to uh, file your business taxes, maintain the business throughout the year. Um, it's not as complicated, or it doesn't get as complicated as an S or a C Corp. Um, now, my wife and I, to be honest with you, uh, after about 10 years, 11 years into it, about a year ago, we transitioned to an S Corp. For tax purposes, That for us, that's actually much more beneficial now because our business has grown and there's a handful of other reasons as far as tax purposes go that more benefit us and more benefit our business than it did before when it's an LLC. But if you're just starting your local food business, I highly recommend the simple forming of an LLC. Number nine. Now, you need to get a business bank account. Now, I know you probably have a personal bank account, maybe a checking and savings, that's great. But you need to have an account set up specifically for your business and you wanna do that for many purposes. Mainly, you wanna establish your business as a legitimate business and having a bank account which you can have checks. If you have to cut checks to business accounts or invoices or whatever it may be, you can draw upon those funds from your specific business account, not necessarily from your own LLC, from your own personal account. You wanna make sure that is a business LLC account. So make sure you set up a business account. There's a lot of benefits to that. And down the road, of course, as you get business credit, business lines of credit, you wanna distinctly have a separate account specifically set up for your business. Number eight, understand this. If you start an e-commerce food business, if you start a food truck, if you have a restaurant, you need to market your business. Marketing is not rocket science. It doesn't have to be difficult. Simply put, marketing is getting the eyes of your customers on your product or service. 
figuring out first who those customers are, where they may be online, and just targeting your marketing purposes directly to that group of people. That is a simple form, a simple explanation of doing it. It doesn't have to be difficult. To be honest with you, the majority of the traffic that we get through our six e-commerce businesses are absolutely free. I use social media. I have been doing it for 12 years, plus I have a degree in marketing, which kind of helps out a little bit. But to be honest with you, the implications and the way that we actually impl implement most of what we do online is free. I do some paid traffic through Facebook, but I don't do a lot of it. I actually use the right hashtags, I post consistently, and I simply just create content and links to our product, and it's worked out great for us. Same thing goes for a food trucks, same thing goes for a restaurant. If you're a brick and mortar or a food truck, and you're not necessarily on e-commerce, you can still use social media the exact same way. You want to market your food business, even if you're a local food business, it doesn't matter. Give yourself an opportunity to learn some of these basics. And as a matter of fact, down below in the description section, there's a link to a book that is absolutely amazing. This gentleman brings it out every single year and it's 500 social media tips and tricks. And it's literally a book that's probably just a couple hundred pages. It's not very thick, but it literally gives you over 500 tips on how to implement them on social media. And they're extremely simple ways to do this. If you allot yourself a little bit of time, learn how it works and see what works best for your food business, you need to market your food business. Number seven. So I was mentioning before about social media. So you need to have a social media presence. Now marketing can be outside of social media. If you were to actually have a really optimized website, you can just tap into the traffic that you would get from that. Or if you have an e-commerce business, or if you're selling through Amazon, eBay, Etsy, or even Bonanza or other websites, you can get what's known as organic traffic. And that's traffic that's not really even related to social media at all. It's simply having the product or your, your service or product on those platforms. And because you have it in front of millions of people, they want to go to your website and they're naturally and organically just going to go. You don't have to pay for it. But social media presence everywhere from LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, um, Facebook, and everybody else in between, I highly recommend you be on all of them. But what has worked well for us is focus on two. And the reason why I say two is one is not really going to be enough. If you try to master three, four, all of the social media platforms, you're going to burn yourself out. And to be honest with you, certain products and certain food businesses actually do better on certain platforms. That's going to be up to you to do a little bit of research and find out what works best. For us, it happens to be Facebook and Twitter. So over the past 12 years, I've kind of refined what we've done on those platforms. And those two bring us the most traffic. Even though I am present on LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest, we get nearly 400,000 people visit our Pinterest page every single month with 11,000 plus uh, followers and growing. But all of those uh, links and all of those pages all help us to get people back over to our website. Number six, you need to have an online presence. Now, not to duplicate what I'm talking about social media or even marketing, but a lot of food truck operators, a lot of restaurants, a lot of brick and mortar, a lot of non-online businesses don't realize the importance of having an online presence. And that could be even a simple blog. If you're a food truck operator, maybe you just want to blog about your daily adventures in the food truck industry. If you have a restaurant or cafe, have a single one, two or three page website. You don't have to be so involved in it, but you need to have an online presence. The reason being is that even if you're on Yelp or some of these review websites, the reason being is that people will go to the web, to the internet automatically. They're going to go online and they're going to look and try to find out more information about your brick and mortar, your food truck, your packaged food product, whatever it may be, because it all kind of trickles down into being online. So the more information that you have or content about your food product, your food business, whatever it may be, is actually going to be a benefit for you. So make sure that you're actually online somehow. Even a simple blog that you can literally create for free through Blogger, uh, WordPress, or even GoDaddy, uh, Weebly, Shopify, they all have blogs. It's very simple to start one, but have some type of online presence. Number five. Now, of course, you need to have insurance. Now, this is kind of a no brainer, but believe it or not, some people who start businesses from home, a local food business from home specifically under the cottage food laws, don't even have insurance coverage on their business. And that is a huge risk. The laws don't necessarily cover you at all. If somebody were to get sick or they have a problem with your food and they have hospital bills, or they lose their work or something to that effect, they can sue you and they will sue you personally. And you can lose your house and you can lose your car and you can even lose a shirt off your back. Hypothetically, of course. 
But yes, you could definitely do that. But you want to make sure that you have insurance. If you have a food truck, you need insurance. Obviously, if you have a restaurant or a coffee shop or cafe, you're going to need to have insurance. If you're doing it from home, if you're creating a packaged food product that you're going to sell online, maybe you're not actually having people come into any brick and mortar, but you have a packaged food product, you've got to have insurance. Be sure to do that. And normally it costs really between five to about $600 starting on the low end if you're creating packaged food products. If you have restaurants, obviously the insurance is going to be considerably different because you've got a lot of factors to come into play. Number four, make sure you know what permits, licenses, and certificates you need to have. Every local food business, no matter what type, has a variation of different types of permits and licenses in order for you to operate. Obviously, a brick and mortar business is going to be different than a home-based business. But every single one of those different industries, food trucks, packaged food products, if it's a dessert company, whatever it is, they're going to have a variation of permits and licenses. So know the type of permits and licenses you need and make sure you get them. Really quick tip, keep in mind that every single permit and license normally is an annually issued permit and license, meaning you need to reoccur it and re, um, reinstate it every single year, one year at a time. So if you elapse that and you don't do it and you get caught without having it, you can get into a lot of trouble. I know this from experience because when we first started, we had a slew of different permits and licenses and every single year I had to go online, register it, and keep it up to date. Now, number three, depending on the type of food business you're going to have, obviously the budgets will vary dramatically. What I've always recommended to do is to work within the budget you have currently. If you don't have the money that you need right at this moment, give yourself some time and don't be in a rush. Give yourself a few months or even a couple of years to accumulate the money that you really truly think you need without getting a loan or tapping into your existing credit cards or home equity or 401k. I speak of this only from experience because I did that when I started my Italian bakery and it was a lot of learning lessons to be honest with you. So would I do that again? Probably not. What I've always recommend to my clients when I do my consulting or to you guys here on YouTube, make sure that you just stay within your budget. You can grow your business gradually, invest little by little, or if you have a family member, a friend, if they want to go into partnerships with you and they believe enough in your product or your business, let them fund it for you. But always keep in mind that if you do that, that you have a plan to pay it back and maybe even potentially back with some interest but stay within your budget. Give yourself time, do not rush into your, your business. It's not gonna happen overnight. Even if you had a million dollars tomorrow, it's not gonna necessarily manifest itself and create this big business within a matter of a few days. So give yourself time and invest as you can. So number two, you need to pick the type of food business. So you wanna create a local food business and you're probably thinking, well, Damon, I have so many interests. I think that's really cool to start a food truck. Man, my, my dream with my wife is to open up a restaurant, but I really love to create barbecue sauce. Maybe I should create a packaged food. Keep in mind, there is literally an infinite amount of food business models out there. Uh, you can resell coffee, you can start a candy business, you can sell tea online, you can start an e-commerce food business selling prepackaged foods. You could resell existing foods. You don't even have to make them. You could buy them in bulk, have a warehouse, and simply just resell them. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, isn't Walmart, Target, Amazon, they've already got the, the market down. I can't compete with them. Nonsense. Do yourself a favor and stop thinking that way. There is an enormous amount of opportunity online. And I've mentioned this one before, but I actually have one product that sells insanely well, and it's chocolate-covered pretzels. Uh, there's probably 10,000 or more people online that sell chocolate pretzels, but we do probably nearly 100 grand a year just selling pretzel rods that we make in our facility. Now, I didn't invent pretzel rods, I just make them. But I can tell you the one thing that separates me from other sellers and the reason why I do so well is I market my product. I promote it, I build content online about it, I am posting on social media, creating blog posts, and it all brings everybody right back to where my stores are. That's the difference between someone who will be prosperous and sell and is going to make money and people who will not make money. So figure out what it is that you want to do. And if you have a brick and mortar and you're in a local area of town, fantastic. You just got to keep, keep it on Yelp, keep it on local services, offer DoorDash or door delivery systems. Make sure that you're out there and you know who the people are who you're going to um, gear your uh, marketing and advertising to and market to those people. Okay. Lastly, number one have passion for what you do. I don't care if you're selling barbecue sauce, if you're opening up a taco food truck, or you wanna create a coffee shop just like Starbucks or brick and mortar, all of those things can succeed if you are passionate about what you do. 
I started out 12 years ago and I was super excited because one of the biggest things that ever happened to us was our first few sales on eBay. Yes, believe it or not, we started on eBay and we were selling cookies and I got like about 20 orders in a matter of a month. And I thought that was the most amazing, exhilarating thing. And I was just hooked to it because I saw the potential and the opportunity to expand and explore new places and new things. So we went to Etsy and then Amazon and then it all went from there, from Bonanza and everyone else in between. So all of these shops actually ended up happening just because I got super excited over selling some cookies on eBay. So you are passionate about what you do. If you want to sell ketchup and mustard and you've got your own variation, then so be it. Because there is a lot of people who use ketchup and mustard out there and the internet is gigantic. So I have passion for what you do. That is number one. So if you have questions about how to start a local food business from home or local food business even in your community, let me know down below and I'll see you guys on our next video.